My name is Dalton Puiralde, Assistant Professor, Government Sampai College, Department of Com Commerce, and I will be your host for the day. Before we start our program, I would like to remind all the participants that if you have any queries or questions to the speakers, you may easily drop your questions down in the comment section below so the speakers will clarify your questions after the presentation. Today, we have two speakers who will be presenting. Let me introduce you to our first speaker, Mr. Vanarwad Namte, research scholar in Department of Mathematics and Computer Science, Mizoram University. Mr. Vanarwad Namte has teaching experience of about 12 years for undergraduate program. He already developed 200 applications, worked with more than 30 desktop application projects for different enterprises. He owns a small startup e-commerce business, which is among the first in Mizoram, Northeast India, and also supervises and helps many other startups for their online business within India. His research interest is in the, in the exploration of intuition detection system with modern attack scenario. He has been doing research in computer security system and help many organizations for checking down the loophole in their system. He also participated in International Computer Hackathon four times since 2010. Today, his presentation will be on the topic Network Intrusion and Detection System. Now, let me welcome Mr. Vangarwat Namte to have his presentation. Thank you very much, Government of High College Principal staff and the organizer of this webinar and Mystic Aizol for organizing this international webinar. And I, since the introduction about me was already given, uh, I will not introduce myself uh, again. So today my talk will be on network intrusion detection system in modern scenario. So I will share my screen. I... Okay. So intrusion detections yeah first i'll talk about network intuition so network intuition network intuition is any unauthorized activities on digital network or any small network or maybe uh intranet local network so network intuition often involves activities or, or for stealing information valuable information like a student details or maybe banks credit card details and almost any other documents for some uh and then there's the victims or maybe to threaten the victims and sometimes in return they usually ask for ransom amount as well so network intuition is carried out using some malware obviously so i'll be explaining that in the upcoming slide so first i would like to talk about types of network attacks so we have here uh, first of all denial of service denial of service means someone is attacking your device or maybe on your network and they try to inject some malware or virus to gain some information from your system so they are doing unethically or maybe sometimes ethically as well secondly we have user to root that means some attacker try to bypass your user credential that is your password or your user and even sometimes they take a root privilege super user privilege on your mobile phone or maybe on your computer system. So thirdly, we have remote to user. So from remote, they try to control your network and take over some database control. So usually remote to user is very uncommon in India, but there are many scenarios that these remote to user uh, scenarios are also used in several attack systems. So I'll be explaining, I'll be explaining all these other trees topic later on in the slide and fourthly we have probing probing means someone scan your network and they try to change knowledge and they try to so that is the four types of the network attack so to understand about the network attack first we need to know how it is done so I will, i'll go deep down from the computer virus so a computer virus is type of machine disease program that uh, replicate itself when it is executed on a computer or maybe on a mobile phone system so it also increases the malware within a system itself. So when it affects a file or any kind of other documents, 
So it attached itself to that particular files. And when a user opened that file, then the virus execute itself and replicate from one system to another using even a network. So its malware is created for some unique purpose. Sometimes they were created to steal out some information. Sometimes just to show up some advertisement on a PC or maybe on, a, on your mobile phone. And sometimes just to disable your antivirus so that they can gain access on your computer system. So we have uh, facts that uh, some hackers or some attackers try to inject the malware or virus on your system to run this Bitcoin mining or sometimes to steal out your information or sometimes they even lock your computer uh, files and your important documents. So as we can see that virus uh, torsion worms are a kind of malware and hackers inject in your system to lock your file sometimes. So that is uh, terms as ransomware. Recently, we, we even have many ransomware attacks even in India and not only in India, even in Nigeria. Lots of uh, files were lost because of this encryption uh, malware. So they lock the files. We can't revert it. We can't open it unless and until we pay them a ransom amount. So mostly the ransom amount runs from 300 US dollars to 750 US dollars. So once your file is encrypted using those malware, maybe your wedding photos, or maybe your personal photos, or maybe your official documents, maybe the health patient's details document, all are locked and it can't be reversed until and unless we pay them a ransom amount. So. It was estimated that at least 181.5 million were killed. And more, be, more than that, uh, we will be facing in 2021 and beyond. So let's understand what is malware. I will go down with uh, ransomware first. Ransomware is a kind of malware where, which encrypt the file uh, using torsion infection. So it encrypts the file and it asks you to pay a ransom amount. So once you pay the amount, then they will encryption key, which is like a password. So using can open the file, but what actually happened is sometimes they don't give all the accession access. Like you don't, you cannot open 100% of your files. At least maybe 70% of your file will be decrypted, but 30% will be still encrypted. So, which means you have to pay another ransom amount. So that's very good business for hackers and attackers. So most of the hackers are using it as educational purpose, but also gain financially. So this is the problem. And in science, we can study hacker as one part to financially gain some amount from the victims and otherwise, the student can learn how to decrypt those encrypted files. Maybe mathematically some algorithms is there, or maybe some other way is there to really pay for ransom or not. So let's see what are the evolution of ransomware. Back in 2013, they started the crypto lockers. So what they do is they just some some the hard disks and they try to lock down some. And in 2014, crypto world appeared. So what this crypto world does was like they encrypt the files, but they do not give any uh, legally. So it has to be private. Everything has to be private. And in 2015, ransomware appear as a service. This is the turning point for many hackers to gain financially. So they attack some computer system, they encrypt their files, important documents, maybe the uh, pictures, maybe uh, official documents, and sometimes they even attack military files as well. So an organization have to spend millions of dollars to get back their files, even though the individual and organization get a ransom amount to decrypt their file, they do not get back all their files. As I said earlier, so they usually have another or second ransom to be paid. So in 2016, Loki appeared 
and 2017 respectively uh, many others wanna cry not pekia big payer bitcoin miners uh, scam those ransomware appears till 2020 this is the ongoing weapons i must say weapons so everyone is weaponizing computer system in this modern science someone uh, attack some other organization even the government also involved in these kinds of attacks actually so whether we have to pay ransom amount or not suppose one person has been victimized and he have to pay for a ransom amount if he pay for the ransom that means he is giving uh, some rewards to the hackers for being like he has been a victim so being a victim if he keep paying for the ransom amount the hacker will try to encrypt another file from another individual or organization and it motivate them that's how it goes on that's how it affects in education as well so ransomware actually even affects in education institution also so it's not only individual so i'll discuss that in the upcoming slide as well so as i said ransomware whether we have to pay uh, so some survey was uh, taken by done by casper kai back in 2018 and 19 so you can see a report here in usa many participants think that to pay for the ransom amount and in canada 19 percent think that yes we should pay and 12 percent think that means we are not away from this ransom attack so we have to take measures so i'll be talking so uh what are the latest ransom attacks we can see that travel X, red car council cpi and so on are the latest uh, attack so the first attack is uh, what i want to talk about here is uh, travel X attack the attack on travel X was done on a new year eve that is 31st december 2020 and they compromised some uh, com companies website in over 30 countries not only one country that means not even a single organization so many organization from several countries were compromised this resulted in utter this array for foreign exchange transaction in the first year of 2021 so Hackers illegally demand a 6 million ransom to decrypt their data. So it's a huge amount. Recently also, uh, if many organizations spend a ransom amount, and, and here, as per the report, 6 million ransom was demanded by the hackers. That means governments are losing lots of money due to this network intrusion. And secondly, we can see that Red Car Council attack was also happened uh, during the lockdown last year, 2020. A ransom attack on company rented 35,000 UK in UK residents, individual. They cannot access public access due to the attack. All their network password and all their network routers were being hijacked and all the files all the computer system were encrypted so they have to reinstall the operating system as well otherwise they have to pay for the ransom and cpa california happens by uh, 2020 march just before the pandemic lockdown and the hackers demanded 5 million US dollars to decrypt the files which they stole out. 
So this includes celebrities' accounts details, some bank account details in UK and California. And thirdly, we see Energize the Portugal ADP criminal attacked the huge Portuguese energy company in April 2020 during the pandemic. So criminals encrypt their files, the Portuguese energy company profiles and many other employee details. And they demanded 9.9 .9 million euros, not US dollar, euros. So government have to spend a lot to get back such files. So how do we prevent the ransomware in 2021? So we need to know the measures, what we have to do. First of all, campaign need to be carried out that we should not just allow some hackers to intrude into the network system. So how do they intrude our network system? First, they sent us an email and when we open such suspicious email, the virus run by itself, replicates into our system, and that's how we get infected. And if in case of infection, what we should do? We should ask some professionals to look into the system or maybe the network which we are using, and we need to repair it as soon as possible. And we need to use some antivirus software and some malware software to protect ourselves. And if once our files are encrypted, we have to have our backup. If we do not have any backup, there is no chance to get back the file unless we pay the ransom amount. So we need to know three things here. We have to prevent ourselves from being victimized. So once our file is compromised, we have to professional help from some professional to restore back our system. And thirdly, government need to put some efforts on setting up a response team in case of emergencies because many hackers are targeting an organization, government organization, especially healthcare organization because they are sensitive. They, go, they got lots of data about the patient. And even in education, many students' details are leaked out in an unwanted manner. So, what are the ransomware protection cycle? Since we talk about the protection, first, we need to keep ransomware out. How? We need to train ourselves. We need to educate ourselves how to use computer, how to use computer network, what we should do and what we should not. Secondly, we should use some prevention tools like antivirus, anti-marvel, and we should also update our system time to time. And thirdly, we need to use a strong password so that our computer will not be compromised easily on some untrusted network. Say, when we use some Wi-Fi, public Wi-Fi, and if it is not, if the security is not up to the mark or up, not up to the government standard, then hackers usually take advantage on such network and whoever uses such Network, say I use the network, they can easily access my device and I can be the victim easily. And thirdly, we should always keep uh, good storage. I mean, the, the file where we are storing should not be easily accessible and we should use some uh, extra software to protect from such attack. And secondly, how do we recover the file if it has been compromised? We need to keep a backup if it is important enough. And we also need to use cloud-based service in modern days. We have Google Drive, we have Dropbox, we have many others uh, cloud-based storage. So we have to use such cloud-based storage in order to keep ourselves safe from such attack. Thirdly, detection. So. If antivirus were used, we need to make sure that the antivirus database has been updated regular, in regular basis, and it should contain most of the signatures of such ransomware attack, so that as soon as hacker try to attack on our network, 
the software will stop the uh, attack. Thirdly, oh, sorry, fourthly, the medication. Uh, if in case of our infection, like if we, in, if we are victimized, whether we have to pay for the ransom amount or not, as I talked earlier, so we should see some remedial tools. There are some other tools like uh, Amazon Soft 32, uh, which can decrypt modern ransomware and trip that file. And they also include many prevention tools in order to fight against this ransomware attack. So I would like to mention the cybersecurity facts and figures, which were the effects of 2020 pandemic lockdown. So as I, uh, as we can see in the screen, firstly, uh, a cyber attack at happens every 39 seconds. This was done by some ed educational in institution survey. So it's really happened during pandemic lockdown. As, he, as you know that you have received many false information like you can apply for relief due to uh, COVID and lots of uh, work from home based jobs offer, which were not really true. Secondly, there are more than half a million sexual predictors, like on a social networking site, they posted some sexual photography uh, just to defame someone. So this happens every second as well. And 20% of teens reported they had received an unwanted sex advance online. Maybe abusing words rela uh, related to sexual uh, harassment and so on. And 34% of people feel that they have been cyber bullied during 2020, during a pandemic lockdown. Especially this happened to the school student teenagers. And 99.9% .9 of mobile malware came from third party app store. So as we know that nowadays we access most of our mobile application from Google Play Store and Apple Store. So when someone offer us an application which is other than Play Store and Apple Store, we should keep in mind that they may contain some malware in that application. So we should not simply download such application and install on our system. And 94% of a malware arrived in email. So we should not just click and open such email, suspicious email, especially if they contain very improper English. Most of the suspicious email contains ungrammar sentence. So we should aware about that. And nearly 1.4 billion US dollar was lost during last year just because of the phishing. So phishing means they steal out someone's credential and information like user ID and password and they sold it to say elsewhere. And cybercrime caused the global economic around 445 billion US dollar last year. So this was approximate per year as per the last report. And 56% of cybercrime were facilitated through parent and plus, uh, past employee. So when an employee leave an organization, angrily, they leak the information of such uh, companies or farms or organizations details to the hackers so that hacker take advantages on such account. So later if it's required. So how does cybercrime affect education? According to the recent malware report, 2020, the education sector was the most affected as per their survey. And business sector in 2008 and a half of uh, 2019, uh, the victim were mostly through cyber attack. That is through digital online. Trade runs from some adwares to serious malware like prison and backdoor. And why schools, colleges are targeted by criminals? Schools, college, manage substantial sums of money, store personal information like student details, teachers' details, and connect with a large number of external bodies. So if hackers attack such school or colleges and steal those information, and they can sell such information to other organizations, and also 
they can use ransomware to decrypt such files and data so that they can ask ransom amount from such schools and colleges. So as I said earlier, hacker were uh, happy to receive some ransom amount. So this motivate them. They were motivated by those ransom amount. That's why they try to steal out information from such education and colleges. So how education is called, uh, targeted? They collect information using ransomware, as I told earlier. And secondly, we can also see that uh, phishing happened to steal out their email IDs, password, and so on. And mostly teachers, students were lacking behind the practice of and the ethics of uh, cyber, cyber measures. So they, they need to attend some awareness. Cyber security has to be included in one of our education subjects in order to prevent ourselves from this kind of attack. So how can education and institute defense against cyber crime? A solution can be many, but I mentioned here a few. They need to use some expert. They have to recruit someone who is expert in this field in order to fight against cyber crime and attack. And also they need to know about the suspicious email. They need to use some additional software to filter the email from unknown. And also whenever we receive files, we should not just open blindly without scanning those files like MS Word file or maybe it may be PDF files or maybe any other executable files. And also we need to avoid pirated software. They usually contain malware or adware along with such pirated software or a cracked version. So we need to avoid such software and we need to use only authentic software. So I would like to mention about the timeline of the intrusion data sets. Lots of research have been carried out since 1998 with DARPA organization. And they always updated the database to fight against the, data, uh, the intrusion. Back in 1998, DARPA released DARPA 98 data sets and it has been improved and they call the data set as an SLKDD. And even Punjab University create their own ideas, intrusion detection system, and so on. In 99, DARPA 99 KDD were released, and so on. Until 2020, we get DOH, uh, database or data sets. And they include lots of new criteria, like sometimes SSH, pure, hard bleed, data sets, all those new attacks were included. So currently, Pirated content, online scam, monetary scam. Those are very common in India, as per the report of security trials. And when kids are purchasing some unwanted software or maybe some games, the parent usually complained that uh, their credit cards or their bank account were misused. But when they came to know that their children, their own children, are using the phone and they use their credit card without their knowledge. They usually withdraw the case, the complaint case. As per the Security Center for Forensic Information Security, Kalabaskar. So what are the attacks actually we get in India? According to Kaspar Kai recent report in 2020, 45% of online users in India were attacked by several cyber attacks, even local security threat blackmailing and ransomware as well and in case of being victimized very good government ministry of home affairs had introduced and the dedicated platform to report the cyber crime and they functioned this since 2008 but there were many functions lacking behind 
But nowadays, we can even complain women-related crimes, child abuse crimes, and so on, to such uh, extent. And uh, I almost come in the end of my presentation. In India, we have mostly very big effect on financial fishing. That is our credit card uh, details, debit card details, banking details, banking details, and so on. So this happened on e-shopping site, uh, fraud e-shopping site. Sometimes we simply disclose our credit card details to our friends, close friends, close relatives who were unaware that such data were leaked from their devices. And here we can see a report from Norton report. A survey was conducted in 16 countries and 10 countries were reflected here. From this report, India got the highest crime rate. So, 158.5 million affected devices were reported during 2018. And other countries like UK, USA, and even in so we need to take lots of awareness, our children to see every citizen individuals. So I would like to highlight here elder cybercrime. Elder persons are unaware of being victimized on social networking sites and maybe even a small network, maybe within a town, within a city. Their data were being misused, were being sold to other hackers for some other purpose. So we need to give to even elderly person how to use the internet, the social networking sites. Otherwise, even our elderly person will be victimized. So I'll be coming in my end of presentation. So what we can do to prevent ourselves and to avoid the cyber attack. First, the information which we get need to be in a safe place. We need to share only the information which is required to be shared to outside the organization or maybe to the unknown person. If they were asking our contact number, that means we should not just give them, otherwise they can clone it. The technology which we are using should be up to date. And Emergency response teams should be there. Government should keep some dedicated team in its state or in its country to fight against the cybercrime. And we need to strengthen our security, like multi layer de defense system, layer one, layer two, and layer seven, as used in other seeding server. And thirdly, personal data should not be disclosed anywhere in the social networking sites. There are lots of things we can talk about, the security measures, what we should do, what we should not do. Everything cannot be discussed in this webinar, so maybe other webinar will be there where we can discuss such measures. So for this presentation, I'll be ending up my presentation by saying that India has very large attack even during the pandemic lockdown and they need to take several measures in every situation the technique may be different so government need to put more efforts on education to tackle with this cyber attack i hope the government will deploy this cybersecurity education in all the states, and we will benefit from such education. Thank you very much. If you have any question, you can reach me at my email, and I'll be happy to answer that. Thank you.
A very warm thank you to Mr. Manuel Adonhamde for your interesting and wonderful lecture. I hope that your presentation today is beneficial to all the participants. Now we will open the time for discussion. If there is anyone who want to post any queries or questions, you may drop your questions in the comment below box below. I will read them out for speakers so that you can clarify your questions. Okay, here are some questions. I will read it for speaker so he can clarify your queries. Question number one is Can ransomware spread through Wi Fi? Yes, obviously. Uh, when someone is using unsecure Wi Fi, an updated router, uh, the ransomware can easily spread to the devices uh, which were connected using that Wi Fi. So, we should also think about the firmware actually, so so that its device should not be affected if even if the router itself has been affected by the virus or malware. So if we are using Wi-Fi, it's not that uh, we will be infected at once. But if we are using Wi-Fi, we think it's connected. There is a huge chance that we may also get infected with any kind of malware or virus it can interesting answer and here is the second question what are the early warning signs of a ransomware attack yeah that's a very good question so if ransomware if we get ransomware attack on our system uh the system firstly we can notice that the system gets slower and slower since the ransomware Runs ransomware program runs in the background. Uh, the system gets slower and slower, and we can't even open some files. Sometimes uh, it takes lots and lots and lots of time to get open. So it we can know that the system is getting hacked. So when we restart the PC, some of our files were already encrypted. Maybe some are not yet. So in that case, we should straight away take help from some professionals in order to protect ourselves. So if one get ransomware the system, get ransomware and that is the first sign. I hope I answered the question. I hope that you will join us for this session as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manali.